Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Let's Talk Faith. Tonight, we're going to take things a lot more seriously. Usually when I do these podcasts, I like to throw little jokes here and there, make uh, have a few laughs with you guys. But tonight, we're going to take things a lot more seriously, especially if you're an, an unbeliever and not saved. You're going to really want to pay attention to this on the 15th Fundamental truth of the Assemblies of God. Stay tuned to see what it is. Welcome back, everybody, to tonight's episode of Let's Talk Faith. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the 15th fundamental truths of the Assemblies of God. Uh, but before we get started on that, as you can see, I'm here alone in my house. Uh, next week, you will be hearing Pastor Ernesto Barajas on the 16th fundamental truths. So you don't want to miss that. I don't want to spoil it. But uh, if you want to find out what it is, stay tuned to next week. And after that, uh, me and uh, Pastor P, our lead pastor of Douglas First Assembly of God, and, our, and Pastor Ernesto Barajas, we will be back together and discussing another subject. So stay tuned for future episodes. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about the 15th fundamental truths of the Assemblies of God. And as I mentioned before, it's something to take very, very seriously, especially if you're an unbeliever and not a follower of Christ. Uh, the 15th fundamental truth is the final judgment, which is the great, the great white throne judgment. Uh, before we get into that, we'll go back in time. Well, we'll go back and uh, discuss the future time events that are going to happen in the Bible. I discussed that before, where if you want to know the future of this world, you don't need to go to a fortune teller or those zodiac signs or whatever it may be that's non-biblical. But if you really want to know... The Word of God. The Word of God is something that's going to tell you what's going to happen in the future. You know, that's why it's very good to stay in, t in tune with the Word of God, reading, studying, having your devotions, hey, and having and bringing questions to your pastors out there if you have questions. Um, a lot of people are afraid to read the book of Revelations. Why? Because the book of Revelations, it, it tells what's going to happen. And it is scary when you think about it. Have you ever seen those Christian movies of, of um, Left Behind or, or uh, the, the Mark of the Beast, whatever it may be? Well, those times are coming. It may look scary on the TV, and it is scary on the TV, but just imagine how it's going to be in real life. So the next, uh, next uh, event on the prophetic calendar is the rapture. Now, the rapture is confused about uh, that's not the second coming of Christ. That's when we here on earth are going to be caught up in the sky. And those who are dead, they're going to be caught up in the sky. To, to uh, more explain that is that, you know, on this time now, those that we have lost, that have passed on are with the Lord, their bodies are buried, but their souls go up to the Lord. Now, when the rapture happens, their body, their, their new, brand new, perfect body is going to meet up there with them in heaven, and also us that are here, are alive, on this earth, we're going to be caught up to meet with the Lord. That doesn't mean that that is the second coming of Christ. That's the rapture. The second is the great tribulation. That's the seven years that of, uh, of troubled times. You do not want to be here when that happens. Then it's the Armageddon, and then the millennium. The millennium is a thousand reigns. The millennium, it means thousand. It's a thousand reign of Christ when He actually comes down which is a second coming, and he takes over the world during his time. He's reigning all over it, which you could call it peace on earth at that time because as Christ is reigning for a thousand years, Satan is bound for a thousand years, Christ is running the show, and everything is just perfect. We're not going to have no sickness, no, uh, no, um, you're not going to need no contacts, no glasses. Hey, for some of us that lost our, lost our hair, we're not going to even need two pays. So uh, that's the millennium of Christ. And then when that thousand, time, thousand years is up, then it's a battle of Gog and Magog when the devil comes out and starts deceiving those. Now you start asking yourself, well, if Christ was reigning for a thousand years and the Satan is set free, how can he start um, bringing people to follow him again? Well, it's those people that are left from the tribulation, the great tribulation that is left behind and that have witnessed the millennium reign of Christ. 
And then the devil comes and starts deceiving those people. And after that, it's the great white throne judgment. Now, don't get it confused. This is different from the judgment seat of Christ that Christians will stand before. The great, the great white throne judgment is for non-believers only. The final judgment is where there is no more Satan to do his thing. So Satan is not going to be roaming around anymore. He's going to face the certain judgment. If you, want, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. And this is what it says. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexual, immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is a second death. Now, you start to think about second death. What, what does that mean? There are two deaths that the Bible talks about. And the first one is physical death. death. You know, here on earth where you die at an old age or wherever it may be, that's our physical death. The second death is a spiritual death. Now, the spiritual death is, this is the worst of death because this is eternal separation from Christ. Jesus indicated that the death of your body is nothing compared to the conscious, everlasting banishment of a soul from God. Now, Pastor Greg Laurie, I love to listen to him. And uh, he was talking about uh, this, what we're talking about here, the, the great white throne judgment. And he said something that really stuck with me. And uh, I'm going to share it with you. So Greg Laurie says, Eternity to the godly is a day that has no sunset. Eternity with the wicked is a night that has no sunrise. Did you guys catch that? Let me repeat it. Eternity to the godly is a day that has no sunset. Eternity with the wicked is a night that has no sunrise. You want to turn with me again uh, to Revelation chapter 20? Just go back a page. We're going to be at Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. And this is what it says. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it, earth and sky fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what he has done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is a second death. Now again, we went back and, we, and I, I talked about what the second death was. The second death is separation from Christ forever. There's no coming back. Like we have it here now, us as Christians, we're not perfect. You know, everybody sins. There's no one good but God. You know, we were, I was talking about this in my, in my youth class, and uh, I got a lot of eyes opened at me when I said this, that heaven is a perfect place. Perfect place. In order to get to heaven, we have to be perfect. You look at me just like the youth did, like, wait a minute. So you're saying nobody, nobody at all is not going to go to heaven because we're not perfect. You're absolutely right. Because the Bible says there's no one good but God. And that's why... God sent his only son as a savior because we cannot save ourselves. So God, Jesus paid the penalty for our sins. And now us as believers give our life to Christ, have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, trying to be Christ-like day by day, transforming ourselves. Meaning all of us were born into a, a very, very sin world. We all sinned, fell short of the glory of God, we all freely made a decision to give our lives to Christ. So the person that we once were, we're not that anymore. We are slowly trying to change with the help of God and being in the Bible and in prayer, getting close to Him, trying to transform ourselves to be Christ-like. 
Yes, again, we're never going to be Christ-like. We're never going to be perfect. But that's why every day we have to go to God on our knees, asking for forgiveness for the sins. But there has to be a change in your lives when accepting Christ. So, going back to uh, verse 14. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is a second death. Verse 15. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Now, the lake of fire is a terrible picture of the final destiny of the lost. Now, the Bible is portraying a picture of those unbelievers, those who go to the great white throat judgment and are cast in the lake of fire for eternity away from God. Now, people are afraid, like I said, to read Revelations. You see movies of the left behinds, of the mark, and it scares you. But this is only just a picture. What you watch on TV is just a movie. And it scares you. But for some of us, it doesn't scare us enough to make our choice to follow Christ and not be in this final judgment. You know, that's why I say we take this lesson here. I want us to take it very seriously because I don't want anybody any of my loved ones or my friends to not know who Jesus Christ is as their personal savior, having a personal relationship with him. Because in the end, we're getting closer and closer to the rapture, getting closer and closer to the tribulation, where I don't want to be a part of that. And I don't think anybody else wants to be a part of that once they start seeing what's actually going to happen. Now, number one, it speaks of trouble and distress, weeping and and gnashing of teeth, everlasting destruction, and a fiery furnace. It, it, speaks, it speaks of gloomy dungeons, eternal punishment, a hell where the fire never goes out, a fiery lake of burning sulfur, and the smoke of and the smoke of their torment rises, and forever and ever there is no rest day or night. Indeed, it is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Number two, the believers of the church, aware of the fate of those who lived in sin, it was for this reason they preached with tears and defended God's infallible word and saving gospel against all distortion and false doctrine. You see, people get mad at us Christians when we start bringing up Christ and that, you know, there's going to be a time where it's not going to be a choice. You're not going to have that free will choice to accept Jesus Christ. Now is a time where you have that choice. You can either choose God or you could choose Satan. It's the only two choices you have. Now, you see, there's two different books here, and this is probably one of the scariest passages of Scripture here. What I just read in my study Bible, I read that, that uh, Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15, and what I just read in more depth was verse 14 about the lake of fire. Why is this called the great white throne? Well, for one, the white throne is called great because God is sitting there. It's called white because... It's pure. You see, this final judgment, there's a judge, but there's no jury. There's a prosecutor, but there's no defendant. It's just God. And people may ask, well, if God is so good and so loving, then why is he sending people to hell? Now, let's restate that question. God doesn't send anybody to hell. The Bible says that God is very patient with us, that he doesn't want anybody to be without him. He doesn't want anybody to live eternally without him lost. So we back that up and say, God doesn't send us to hell. In this world, we have, a, we have what's called a free will, a choice. There's choices. You either choose God or you choose to be without God. And you know, some people start asking themselves, well, 
you know, I'm not ready to start leaving the life that I'm living now. I'm having too much fun. I know that there's a God there, and I know that I need to repent. I, need, I know I need to accept Him as my Lord and Savior, but I'll do it. I'll do it. But just hold off a little bit. Let me just have my fun here. You know, we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised five minutes from now. Right now, while you're watching this podcast, boop, it could happen. The rapture. And if you're there still looking at this screen, and you start seeing destruction happening all around you, there's a lot for you to worry about. This pandemic that we just had, this COVID-19, it scared so many people. It scared, it scared the world. Imagine when the rapture happens, the great tribulation starts, and these prophetic dates start happening. What chaos is this world going to come down to? You know, for the assemblies of God, this, uh, this doctrine is, is so important, the final judgment. It's God is a God of love. But he is also a just God. Now we look back and say, you know, God is not a good God. God is not a good judge. You know, we sit there and we start counting the deeds that we've done. I've done this, God. I, I paid my tithes. I go to church. I do all these things for you, Lord. And yet I'm still left behind here to, to witness all this stuff. And maybe I'll be even seeing the final judgment, the great white throne judgment. Why? Let me tell you this as an example. Think of the one person, just one person that you, you love. It could be your mom, your dad, uh, your sister, your brother, your, your children. Think of that one person. <clears throat> if they were murdered, they were murdered, they got killed. That person got caught, was arrested, was brought to trial. And the judge sits there with his hammers, all right? You killed this person. Why do you think I should let you go? What, what, what reason? Why should I put you in jail forever? And that person says, well, your honor, I wasn't in my right mind at that time. I was a little drunk or I was on some drugs. But your honor, if you see my record, I have a job. I have a, a house. I've never gotten a speeding ticket. This is the only thing on my record. So that's why I believe that you should let me go because all the good that I've done, it oversees the bad that I've done. This is the only bad thing that I've done. And the judge sits there and says, my goodness, you are absolutely right. You know what? I'm going to let you off the hook this time because you're right. You have all this good. You have a family. You have a job. You've done everything right. And this murder is the only bad thing you've ever done. So go ahead and take the cuffs off him and... And let him go with his family. Now you sit there, you're in the stand, and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. He just let this guy go that killed the person that I love. Now would you say that's a good judge or a bad judge? All of you would say that's a bad judge. You see, we're not judged by what we do good in this world. That's not going to get us to heaven. What's going to get us to heaven there's only one way. And Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. There's no other way. Now there's a lot of beliefs out there. And you've heard me say this before. That there's a lot of beliefs that, you know, when you die, you, you come back as something else, reincarnated or whatever it may be. Or if you die, that's the end of your story, that's the end of your life. Uh, that's the that's it. You're in the background, buried. There's no heaven. There's no hell. But as believers, there's only two way, places you're gonna go, and that's heaven, and that's hell. The choice is up to you on how you live your life here and what you choose. If you choose to follow Christ, or if not. Now, I go back and I say, well, if all those other beliefs are right. Us Christians, but we believe it was just all a lie. Nothing bad's gonna happen to us. We just preach something that's false, believe that something that's false, we die. Nothing bad's gonna happen to us. Now, as Christians, we believe that all these prophetic things that I just mentioned in the beginning of this podcast is gonna happen. 
the, from the rapture all the way down to the new heavens to the new earth. And for the non-believers, a great white throne judgment is for the non-believers only. That that's it. You have no choice. You've made your choice on this earth. And now you're going to spend eternity in hell. And what I just read describing hell, that there's darkness, that it's just hot fire everywhere. That's your choice. Now, if that's true, what we're preaching and believing, they either go to heaven or you go to hell. And some of the non-believers are going to face this great white throne judgment. Then those people who don't believe in this have a lot to worry about. You get what I'm saying right there? Us believers as Christians, for those other beliefs that have different opinions on what's going to happen, we have nothing to worry about because nothing really is going to happen to us. But if we're right and all this stuff is going to happen, then you who haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior have a lot to worry about. But He is also a, a just God. He cannot allow sin and wickedness to go unpunished. One false teaching suggests that all people, whether righteous or wicked, will eventually be saved. It's not true. But this is contrary to the clear teaching of Scripture. This doctrine is important because it reminds us, all humans, that the wages of sin is death. That there is a judgment of everlasting punishment waiting the devil, his cohorts, and all people who have not accepted God, gracious provision of salvation. This is the punishment of that. You know, we can sit there and we're very good at it as humans. And I'm not saying, I say we, because all of us, including myself, we're very good at pointing the fingers at people when we're the ones that have messed up. If it's our mistake, we try to find a way to Oh, it's her fault, his fault that this has happened. This is the same way with Christ. There's going to be a day when the rapture is going to happen. There's going to be a day when we go through seven years of tribulation. There's going to be a day when the non-believers are going to face the great white throne judgment. And there's no turning back from that. You yourself have picked that destination. You yourself have picked that eternal life because of what you decided here on this earth today. So this is something to take very, very serious. I don't, I'm running out of time now, but I hope and pray that those of you who haven't given your life to Christ, and for those of you who are watching this and are believers, share this to your loved ones. It may be hard, they may not understand, they may even get angry with you, but you do not want to go on living, especially if that loved one passes away before you. You do not want to go on living that you never talk to them about Christ and talk to them about their consequences of not following Christ. The choice is yours. God gave us a free will. We decide to go God's way or to go our way. You know, Adam in the garden, he chose to do it his way and his way caused death. To this day, the choices of his actions are the consequences of what's going on right now in present time. The choices that you make now, you're gonna see the consequences later on and it's gonna be too late. So again, please think about this. Think about your choices. Say yes to Jesus. The next time that altar call happens at church and there's an opening for salvation for you to go up front and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, do not wait another day. That day, today, is the time to accept Jesus Christ. I want to thank all of you for joining me on this podcast of Let's Talk Faith. Tune in next week as Pastor Baraja speaks on the 16th and final fundamental truths of the Assemblies of God. Stay tuned for that. God bless.